Once we have understood the concept of single responsibility principle, now let us try to understand the next principle in solid principles that is open closed principle. So what does open closed principle is all about means just remember that whenever the software entities we create for example classes, modules, functions etc. they should be open for extension but closed for modifications. Dr. Bert Rand Mayer originated the term in his book Object Oriented Software Construction. Usually whenever we get a new requirement for making some changes then the most common approach will be we shall open the existing code and try to modify the definition of the method for example in our first module if you remember we discussed about some accounts example right like saving and current accounts etc and there was a method like withdraw where we had multiple condition checks so if that kind of requirement comes into picture then we need to always remember that we should not modify the existing functionality but instead we should be able to extend our application to satisfy the new requirement or changes. But with this statement we usually get a doubt why should code has to be closed for modifications. The reason is very simple the less we likely to change the code it will be less likely to introduce new bugs in the existing code and we also won't be redeploying the same code again and again. And also the other advantage we will get is sometimes making the changes or modifications might break the dependent code when we have to deploy the updates. And if any developer is watching this course they might have observed this kind of problems practically in their work front right. Then we might get another doubt if the existing functionality have some bug then what we need to do. Remember that it is okay to modify the definition for bug fixes but for new requirement and changes in the existing requirement it is always advisable to follow this principle. Now let us understand the typical approaches that we need to follow for writing the code using OCP. Remember that we have three types of methods or approaches that we can follow to achieve open closed principle. First one, we can use parameters by passing in different arguments to a function or method and based on the parameter value we can change its behavior. This is one of the most simplest approaches and most of the freshers usually follow this method. But the problem is if any new requirement comes or if there is a change in the business logic then this won't be a proper solution. And the second method is inheritance. Many design patterns uses different inheritance approaches to facilitate OCP. Usually whenever we get a new requirement in this case instead of modifying the existing class we will be inheriting the existing class and provide the definition for the new requirement within the subclass. And also this includes to allow the clients to provide the new definition by overriding the abstract method coming from the abstract class. And the second method is the best method or approach for achieving OCP in most of the cases. And if you remember that we have done in our first module means we have created an abstract class with the name account and provided multiple definitions for the withdraw method from the subclass. That example also follows the open closed principle but we are not aware of that point that we are following open closed principle at that time right. Okay now the third approach will be using composition or injection where instead of providing the logic within the class we shall provide the logic within another type the class references and instead of hard coding the reference to the other type the references provided through a technique called as dependency injections 
and I will discuss more in detail about this while discussing about the fifth principle in solid that is dependency inversion principle. Sometimes our mindset will start asking a crazy question. What will happen if we don't follow the open closed principle at the time of requirement enhancements in the development process? Then remember that if we keep on updating the existing class definitions by adding more functionality or modifying the existing functionality, then we will be eventually ending up with testing the entire functionality repeatedly and also we need to specify the scope of changes to the quality assurance team every time and always they need to test the entire flow and since the time to perform these activities will also increase it will become a costly process for the organization and also there is one more major problem we might face sometimes modifying the existing code might break down the entire application if there are lots of dependencies are present okay hope you have understood the importance of open closed principle now let us try to understand the concept of ocp with another simple scenario in the previous example if you remember we had a requirement of logger functionality now let us say that the client wants to add some new features to that requirement. For example, the client wants to log the error messages within a file and also within the database along with the system event logs. Then how do we handle this kind of scenario? Now if the developers doesn't follow the design principles immediately then we will start updating the class for example the logger class and immediately they will try to add two new methods one method for example write log to text file and that will accept the error message and one more method write log to database and even that method will be accepting the error message as its argument and sometimes some extra smart developers will also change the name from logger to error logger thinking that all these logs are maintaining the error messages right now if we have updated our software like this what will happen do you get any problem in this case or we won't have any problem like the previous srp scenario means obviously you will face lots of problem because the extra smart developers also have updated the class name as a result it will break the entire application sometimes so how do we handle this scenario then the best approach will be following the open closed principle I have already discussed that OCP can be achieved in three different methods and the best method is using the concept of inheritance by extending the existing classes and add the new methods within the subclass. For example, already we have a class called as logger, which is having a method to write log to system. Now, what we can do is we can create a subclass for example error logger by inheriting the logger class and then we can add the new methods for example write log to file and write log to db within the subclass and in case if you have already got the information from the client stating that currently we may be writing the log to the system event logs but eventually later we might require to write the log within the text file or within the database file means we should have followed the OCP principles in the beginning itself by creating an abstract class for example error logger which will be having a method called as log error that should accept an error message as an argument and we might be defining multiple subclasses by inheriting the error logger abstract class for example event error logger text error logger and db error logger and since these subclasses are inheriting the abstract class Within the subclass, we will be overriding the log error method to perform the task as per the requirement. 
in the next video let us try to understand practically how to achieve the open closed principle